YouTube, what is good? So today I wanna to talk about one of my favorite elements of my street photography, and that is utilization of color and creating vibrant standout street photography images. And if you caught the last vlog, you saw these couple photos right here. And today I wanna to break down how I edited them using Adobe Lightroom. Now, this process is pretty standard to most of the things that I do typically, but today there are a few little tweaks and a few things in there that I think stand out that really set these images apart that a lot of you can benefit from. So we're gonna go ahead and and just jump right into it, get into Lightroom. I'm gonna show you the first couple steps that I do. If you enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up button. And real quick, I wanna thank our sponsor today, Cuts, for getting me laced up for today's video. This hoodie, this vest is made by Cuts. You can go to the link in the description down below to get 15% off. We'll talk about them a little bit later on in the video as well. But let's get into it. Let's jump into Lightroom right now and start editing some vibrant street photos. So the first thing we gotta do on this photo, which I do on all my street images, is add in a tone curve. Now this tone curve is very basic. It's available on my Patreon. I'll link it down in the description below, but realistically, you could make one of these yourself. I don't have any presets available, but this is something that I created over the years, and I just use it on most of my images. It adds in just a little bit of contrast right there. Pretty simple and straightforward. So if this was a photo set, I would go ahead and copy this over here, and we'll get rid of crop. I would add tone curve to the copy, paste that on in right there, and then we'll do the same thing here. So if you had a photo set and you kind of wanted everything to match, having a tone curve like this to start out with is one easy way to get the style going. Now, with this photo right here, the first thing that we're gonna do, like always, is basic adjustments. I wanna warm this photo up a lot for whatever reason, the white balance. I can't remember what white balance I was using uh, when I created this, but I definitely wanna bring it more towards the warmer side which is gonna dramatically change the way this photo looks to start out with, and it's also gonna match more of how it looked when I was actually out in the field creating it. So I think right about, yeah, right about there should work. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this tint a little bit as well, just a little bit more towards the green side. Uh, I think that looks pretty solid. So now that we got that out of the way, we are gonna make our basic adjustments. Now, this is a very highlight heavy image. As you can see, the highlights in here are very bright. And normally I don't drop my highlights this much, but in the case of this photo, we're gonna bring them down to negative 100. It seems like we're not having any issues by doing that, and I think it really creates a nice contrast in this image, whereas before, they're very blown out. You know, this was, I guess, essentially this scene was was the sun coming directly down this alley. So even though our shadows are very dark, this highlight is just so hot, the only way to fix it is to bring it down quite a bit in post. So we're gonna drop that all the way to negative 100, and I'm gonna drop in a graduated filter up here just to bring these highlights down a little bit more also. I think we'll go ahead and bring them, uh, we'll bring them down like so. There we go, hang on, let's get rid of this masking. Uh, the reason I'm bringing these highlights down is because I just want the sky to pop a little bit more. Also, we're gonna go ahead and remove that dust spot right there. Maybe add in some shadows. Uh, nah, I'm not gonna do that. So the highlights to right about there. Leave that as is, click on done. So real quick, I wanna interrupt this editing workflow to talk a little bit more about today's sponsor, Cuts. Cuts is a brand that provides so much versatility and value to my life. Their products are something that I can wear from this YouTube video to a business meeting to a night out and always feel confident and always feel like I look good. And it's kind of funny, I actually found the brand Cuts for the exact same reason that the company was founded. I was looking for a t-shirt that fit me well, something that I could wear to the gym, wear in one of these videos, wear out with friends, and never have to change and never lose that confidence of knowing that I looked good. And that's actually how the brand was founded. That was the original concept behind Cuts. And now they have expanded into everything that you can think of. They have amazing jogger pants, they have sweatpants, they have hoodies, they have vests now like this one. They have a bomber jacket that they recently released as well as their new commuter jacket. So if you wanna step up your wardrobe, Cuts is the way to do it. It's what I recommend. My favorite products from them, obviously I love the hoodies, I wear them all the time, but the crew necks are fantastic. But still, hands down, my favorite product is the elongated t-shirt that is what I recommend to everyone, especially if you're someone a little bit taller like me and you're looking for a little bit more of an athletic fit to your clothes, that is definitely what I recommend. So if you wanna try out Cuts, you can go to the link down below in the description and you can get 15% off your first order and support the channel in the process. So thank you Cuts for sponsoring the video. Let's get back to this editing workflow. 
I'm actually gonna go ahead and shrink all this down a little bit to give us some more room for editing. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and clone stamp out this dust spot. I just did it right here. So delete it, you can see there is some dust. Let's go ahead and command Z us back. There we go. And we can also get rid of any other small distractions like this little light up there, I think we can go ahead and get rid of. And we can get rid of some of this down here on the car. We'll go ahead and get rid of that one. Uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of this. Sometimes I save this for the end, but since we're already doing it, I might as well knock it out right now. You can get rid of whatever you want. It's a matter of personal preference, but I think some of these reflections are important to the overall look of of the image. So now we're going to go ahead and continue on with the basic adjustments here. I'm going to add in some shadows to this. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and bring down our whites to once again take care of some of those highlights. I'm going to bring my blacks up just a little bit. I think right about eh, right about there looks pretty good. I'm going to drop my clarity down on this. I think that sometimes these Leica images, you know, with a lot of megapixels can be a little too digital feeling. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of that sharpness and some of that clarity. And I'm going to bring our vibrance way up on this. Now, I don't always recommend everyone doing this. For whatever reason, the Leica SL2 files, they just have kind of this dull look to them, and I find myself doing a lot heavier of color adjustments in the saturation and vibrance sliders. So you might wanna cut these in half depending on what camera you're using. It's all gonna be a matter of preference. Now, this looks kind of crappy right here, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into our color channels and we're gonna make some adjustments here. So the first color is red. We're gonna bring the luminance down on that. I'm gonna go ahead and bring our saturation down on the red a little bit as well and move it towards the orange side, I think right about there looks pretty solid. We're going to do the same with our orange. I'm going to bring the orange more towards the orange side. I'm going to bring the saturation up on our oranges. Think right around there. It's a pretty heavy adjustment, but there's only a little bit of orange in the wall. And we're going to bring our luminance up on that as well to really get that glow and that pop of this highlight. So I think that looks great. And Last but not least, we are gonna correct all of this yellow that we got going on here, and we're gonna drop the saturation down on that a good amount. That looks good. Bring it more towards the orange side to kind of balance out with those blues, and I think we're good on that. Now, last color adjustment here is our blues. I wanna get more of a teal blue look going on, so I'm gonna bring this over to the teal side right here. I think that in that range looks good, kind of in the middle. And we're gonna bring our saturation down on this a little bit too though, just to sort of mute these colors a little bit. I think that looks pretty solid right there. Let's check it out. Not bad. Now, something missing from this photo though, the colors still feel a little bit stale. They're just, I don't know, there's something off. And what I do with almost all my street photos is I add in some type of split tone, especially to the shadows. So what we're gonna do today is add some warmth into the split tone shadows. And what I'm thinking is right around there. And we'll drop this down to about that saturation level. I think that looks, actually that's pretty much spot on, I think. That looks good. We can always go back up and we can get rid of some of this vibrance if we want. We can bring some of this down to a little bit more of a balanced, natural look. But I think I like the way that is feeling so far. Let's take this on and off one more time. As you can see, just the shadows now have this really nice nice warmth to them. Personally, I just think when the split tone or this color grade is added in, it balances out the colors of the image a little bit better and it's more readable. Right here, there's a huge amount of contrast between the blue and the yellow, and that might be your style. But I feel like by adding this into the shadows, you kind of get more of a smooth transition between these blues here into these oranges. But that's just a matter of personal preference for me. Now with each of these these, I follow basically the same pattern as I did with that first image. I did a color grade right here. Uh, these are the basic adjustments that are added. They're not as dramatic as the previous one. Same with this image right here. Basic adjustments, notice how we brought our shadows way up on this one and we have less of a vibrance adjustment. Once again, the colors are shifted around to create the look that we want with this image. And once again, we have this color grade added in to put some warmth into the shadows and just make the colors feel a little bit more stylized and a little bit more natural feeling. So that's what I did on those two. And I think the last thing I'm gonna do with this image is go ahead and drop in some vignette right here. Let's see. 
I think that looks pretty good. And you can also go in and do some sharpness adjustments if you want. You can hold down option and you can mask off the sharpening, which is something that I do prefer to do. We'll go to right around there, maybe add in a little bit more detail and maybe drop off some of our sharpening. And I think that looks good. That's everything that I would do in Lightroom in this phase of my workflow. So there we go, that's everything more in the basic adjustments department. I'm sure you've seen kind of that similar workflow in other editing videos of mine. It changes slightly over the years, but for the most part, that is how I edit almost every single photo you see following a similar process to that and a similar mindset. But there is one thing that I do, especially for all my street photography and photo sets that I don't talk about as much, that is the secret little cherry on top to each edit. Now it does extend the workflow a little bit, but this is an essential step to my editing and ever since I added this in, I can't lie, my photos have looked a lot better and the colors on them have looked so much better. And they kind of have more of a custom look to them that I think makes it hard for people to always replicate. Not that I really care about that, but it's something I want to show y'all so you can also take advantage of it and get a unique look to your images. So let's jump back into Lightroom, actually Photoshop for this one, one last time. So what you're gonna do here is go ahead and right click and say edit in Photoshop. So I already opened it up in Photoshop. So what we are gonna do is we are gonna go to adjustments right here and we are gonna drop in a color balance. This is the secret sauce. Every single image you see from me has this happen to it. Okay, and it's tedious, I'm not gonna lie. It creates a lot more steps in the workflow, but it allows you for customization of every image specced out to exactly how you want it to look. So what we're gonna do here is go to adjustments. We are gonna drop in a color balance slider right here. Now, color balance is essentially another way to color grade and split tone your image. Now, what I start with is the shadows. So anything right here, uh, anything up here, and in here, we are going to tone. Now, now, with each one of these sliders, obviously if you move the cyan this way or the red this way, you're gonna get more red or more blue and same down the list. So what I like to try to do is just look at this with my eye and try to find a nice balancing point between these three sliders. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna move this a little bit to the red side. I do want a little bit more red in this image. I'm gonna move this magenta, I think slightly to the magenta side. I think that looks pretty good. And we can always jump into our layer and see how big of an adjustment this is making. So far, I'm liking this, and I think I'm gonna get rid of that magenta a little bit, actually. Let's see. Um, I think magenta to just negative one is probably what I'm gonna do here. So remember, the adjustments that happen inside of the color balance sliders are gonna be very small, because if you move it to one side or to the other, you're gonna get this extremely dramatic effect. So this last slider right here is the blue one. I don't think I'm gonna do much with this. I might give it a slight bit on the yellow side. Let's see right there, how is this looking? On and off. Okay, liking the way that looks. Also notice how it adds in a little bit of contrast to this image. This, I'm telling you, is the most important step of my editing workflow. Now next up, we are gonna go to our mid-tones here. I don't know if I'm gonna do much to the mid-tones. I think I like the way that they are looking. We'll go ahead and add maybe a little bit of red in here. Let's see how that looks. Um, eh, looks all right. Maybe a little bit of green into the mid-tones. I think that looks okay. Let's see yellow versus blue. Uh, I don't think I wanna add any blue in here, so I'm gonna leave that at zero. Let's check this. So far, I think it's looking good. I always like to go back and check with it on and off to basically see, is this helping the image or hurting it? And if I ever make an adjustment that I think hurts the image, I get rid of it. So that looks good. And I don't know if I'm gonna even do anything to our highlights. Let's mess around down here with the yellows a little bit. I guess if we go to the blue side, it would cool down that highlight down there, but I don't really know if I like that. It's a matter of personal preference. Some of you might like that highlight to have more of a tone to it, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as is. Maybe just add in a slight bit of blue. Um, eh, maybe a little bit of purple right there. I thought that looked okay. and give this slide to the cyan side a little bit. Let's go check again. There we go. So notice how those super small adjustments do make a big difference in this image. Now let's say I look at this for 10 minutes and I'm not exactly feeling it. I can drop in here with the opacity slider and change it and really customize. So maybe you're thinking it's a little too much. You can drop that down to 75 and take that adjustment just slightly lower, you know, take the edge off, I guess you would say. And then right there, I'll go ahead and file save. What I like to do for my personal social media is add a border. I'll do image canvas size right here. 
I'll drop in a percentage and then, you know, type in whatever, like 110, tab 110. There we go. Simple as that. And then I go ahead and save it. Then that's basically the last step that I do to every image. And a lot of times in photo sets, I'll take this color balance and just bring it over to another image and to another image. So the work is really done in the first one as long as your lighting conditions are the same throughout. There we go, y'all. That is everything you need to know. That is my street photography workflow for editing vibrant colors. If you have any questions, drop them below in the comments. And remember, if you wanna see some of the behind the scenes to this, you can check out the last vlog on the channel. I'll link that down in the description below. And remember, cuts, you can go to that link as well and get 15% off your first order. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Thumbs up, subscribe if you're not yet. I'll see you in the next one.